Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly value, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Men started speaking up. Manosphere was born. Now it's a mainstream situation. One of the worst things that black women have as a problem is lack of accountability. Lack of accountability. Now we talk a lot about that in this space. Well, the women don't, don't have accountability. The accountability is like kryptonite to black women. Women don't have accountability. Accountability, 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 accountability. That's repeated over and over and over to the point where you can almost tune it out. Yeah, women don't have accountability, but then what? No, 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 no. See, we can't go past it. We can't go past the lack of accountability for most women because not only do they lack the accountability in a conversation on a panel where, where a specific thing is being discussed or a specific situation or see, it's not just that. It's not, I wish it was just conversations on a panel. I really do. Then we could dismiss it and then we could really work on what was really going on in the community to fix it. But unfortunately, these interactions on these panels and so forth and on are simply microcosms of exactly what goes on in these households and in these interactions. It take on a little bit different flavor because usually the people talking to men and women talking are not in romantic relationships with one another. However, the, the pathology is exposed. And it is a pathology. Thank you, Too Tall. It is a pathology. The lack of accountability is to the extent that it is pathological. It is a pathological lack of accountability. It happens in real time in active relationships where women do not want to see they don't want to hear they don't want to be told they don't want see what lack of accountability really translate into is you're uncoachable you're uncoachable what is what is it to be coachable what is it to be coachable? To be coachable as a person is to be able to have somebody that no more than you, even if it's just in a specific situation, no more than you have more experience than you in a certain way, whatever, whatever, to be able to come and tell you and say, okay, this is why this particular thinking or this particular action, or this particular way that you're going doesn't serve you. This it doesn't serve. It doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve us as a as a couple in a relationship. Doesn't serve the family. It doesn't even serve your best interest at all. So here's what we do instead. Instead, we're gonna do it this way. This is how we're going to do this in order to get the best possible outcome for what we're trying to do. Thank you, Stardust said, to make corrective measure. Exactly. Thank you, Brian Watts. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you, Pound for Pound. Hey, Pound for Pound. Thank you so much. Say, hey, Sister Krim, I'm still around. Good, good, good. It's been a long time. Thank you, Blue uh, Blue Exodus said, Kendra, do you believe this demon spirit is passed down through DNA or do you think they are choosing to behave this way by and large? This is, this is a spirit being passed down. That's why we call it generational curses. We call it generational curses for a reason. It's an energy. 
So before we can talk about black women being submissive, we can't talk about black women being submissive because black women are not even coachable. Too many are just not even coachable at all. The, some of the best men in their respective fields are always coachable. For many people, Michael Jordan is considered the GOAT of basketball. For many people. Now, some people argue other places, but for many people, especially those of us who watched him play in real time and not just his highlight reels, will consider Michael Jordan the GOAT in basketball. But for as much as we would consider Michael Jordan the GOAT, what made him that way? First of all, he had a competitive spirit. He wanted to be the best. He wanted to be the best in his position, the best on that court, okay? But how to achieve that? Not only his work ethic and his desire to do, but he was coachable. His coaches could come to him and say, Mike, you got to do it like this. Mike, you got to do it like this. Mike, it'll be better for you if your technique was this way. Mike, it would be better for you. Mike Tyson is also considered to be one of the great boxers, especially in recent history. One of the great boxers. We'll watch Mike now at 56 years old and his technique, right? Especially if you know what you're looking at. His technique is awesome. Coachable though. How did he get that technique? He didn't come in and was like, oh, I know how to do this already. So I'm just going to do it any kind of way. No, 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 no. He always reflect on his first and best coach, Cus. Cus Del Motto. And to this day, he will talk about the coaching that Cuss gave him and how he will still implement that today. When he teaches other boxers, when he teaches other fighters boxing techniques, he go back to what Cuss taught him. Not even to the, necessarily just to the experience in the ring on his own, but what Cuss taught him when he was young, 18, 19 years old. He fit.